Hi everyone, I hope everybody's Monday has started well. So this week I thought we would try to tackle some of the labels that you'll find in UK academia. Um, so this has come up in the comments and thank you so much for the lovely comments. It is so nice to have this academic space on YouTube. But I think it can be quite tricky when you're job hunting um, to kind of work out the different university pathways. You know, you might see terms like research assistant and teaching fellow and reader and be thinking, OK, well, what are these different roles and are they routes or things that I'd want to consider as part of an academic career? Now, I'm going to caveat this right at the start. Um, what I'm about to say, I would treat it as a guideline. So universities, you know, they will do things slightly differently. They will use terms in slightly different ways. Um, different subjects might adopt different rules for different positions. Different countries are absolutely going to do things differently. I'm talking in this video very much from a UK perspective. So if I've said something and you think, oh, we don't do that like that at my university, leave it in the comments because it's so good, I think, for people to see kind of the tapestry of how things actually go on at UK universities. But I'm going to try to share the general principles of the different career pathways you can have at a UK university. And we're going to focus on three. So I'm going to focus on what you would think, I guess, as being the most common pathway. So that is where you're combining research and teaching. And I'm going to talk about the research only pathway and the teaching only route. Um, I'm not going to touch on the administration route, the managerial positions or the technical technician position roles. I'm going to save that for a future video or it's going to get way too complicated. So let's start then with the route that I'm on. And I guess is the route that many of us will think about when we think about working at a university. And that is the lecturer to professor route. So the pathway I'm on is one that combines teaching and research and some kind of administrative duty in my department. Um, and so I'm right now a lecturer, then the next step up is senior lecturer, then reader, and then professor. Now, this is where it gets a bit complicated. That's what UK universities usually do. Uh, but some UK universities are adopting more of the US model. So rather than seeing lecturer, senior lecturer, reader, and then professor, you're going to see assistant professor, associate professor, and then either full professor or just professor. And so the assistant professor is kind of similar to lecturer in terms of the standings. And then the associate professor is somewhere between being, say, a senior lecturer and a reader. So, yeah, those, those two pathways, the lecturer, senior lecturer, reader, professor, and then the assistant professor, associate professor and full professor, essentially, ignore my computer, essentially they are the same job. Um, and it's a job that involves both teaching, so teaching undergraduate programmes, teaching master's programmes, um, and having PhDs that I have to look after, so students that you're supervising, and research, so leading research projects, which your PhD students will be working on, your postdocs will be working on, and sometimes your final year masters and bachelor programme students will also be involved in your research projects. Just a quick aside, the term lecturer is quite different than between a UK university and a US university. So broadly speaking, a lecturer in the UK, we are referring to a person who holds a full-time academic position at a university and they are doing both research and teaching. Now, a lecturer in the US is, I guess, more of a kind of a instructor temporary position. I've made a note on this to get it right. So in Canada and in the US, a lecturer so that is now a non-tenure track. So that is means that they're viewing a lecturer as somebody who's not necessarily on a pathway to get a permanent position at a university. Instead, it's often more where you're coming in and you are doing some teaching within that semester for a particular period of time. So it's a teaching position. Um, sometimes they may have research, sometimes they won't have research links associated to them. 
um, and a lecturer in the US because it's this kind of teaching position um, that that person who takes on that role may or may not hold a PhD. So just take home, I guess, from this that the lecturer term is very different between a UK lecturer and a US lecturer. A UK lecturer is a, a permanent, if you like, a tenure track position here in the UK. And if you want to compare, a UK lecturer is the same really as a US assistant professor. OK, so that aside, that pathway is one pathway through the university and it's the one that I'm working on. I love it because I love doing teaching and I love doing research and it means I can bring them both together. But you don't have to. So we do have two alternative routes. You could elect to focus on a teaching pathway or a research pathway. And again, I'm going to refer to my notes because it gets quite complicated. If you're on a teaching career pathway, it's exactly as the title says, you are now focusing more on teaching than maybe on your kind of research within your subject discipline. But again, it gets a bit, little bit more complicated. If you are on a teaching pathway and you're looking to maybe reach the highest levels, so you're looking to become a professorial teaching fellow or teaching position at the university, most likely you're going to need to take research, but it's going to be, and I can never say this word, pedagogical, pedagogical? It is research connected to the education sector. So you'll be looking into learning methods, learning modes, the way to design curriculum. It is very much an educational focused type of research. But anyway, if you're on a teaching career pathway, terms that you might see are teaching associate or maybe teaching assistant, teaching fellow, senior teaching fellow, principal teaching fellow, and then as I said, a professor, teacher, or professorial role specialising in teaching. Um, your big differences then are when you're at the associate assistant role, that's when you are, um, as he says, assisting with a course. So you will be doing some element of a course. You might be helping with the laboratories, or you might be leading a particular topic, or you might be involved with some of the marking. But then when you step across into the teaching fellow position, that's when you might be involved more in actually uh, designing of lecturers, lectures, um, overall module content. Um, typically for these teaching fellow positions, you are going to need a PhD because you're going to be teaching undergraduate students. And then as you go up these teaching ranks, so when you go to your senior teaching fellow, there you know, you're going to possibly be looking after more courses, you might have some programme duties, you might have some specific year group responsibilities. Essentially, as you move up these teaching levels, your personal involvement and accountability will be increasing. So it's an excellent option if you love the teaching part of the job, but you're not so keen maybe on doing subject specific research or your research interest is specifically linked to higher education, to learning, to, um, I guess, modes of study, to where we optimise design of courses. This could be a perfect combination of jobs for you in a, in a teaching pathway. Of course, the opposite might be true and you might absolutely love research, but maybe not be so keen on the teaching. Um, and again, then you can look to focus on a research pathway going through a university. The job titles will sound quite similar. So we've got research assistant, research associate, research fellow, a semi -re a senior research fellow, a principal research fellow and a professorial research fellow. I am reading off my notes because it just gets very, very complicated. Uh, again, your kind of differences are research assistant you will be under the direction of somebody else. You will be actively doing a research task, but you won't be necessarily controlling the overall project. When you then move on to a research associate, typically, because a research associate role might include writing research grant applications, um, you're going to need a PhD and you're going to need to have postdoctoral research experience. So again, it's a bit like the teaching pathway. The more senior you go in the research pathway, the more responsibilities you're going to have, um, the more qualifications you're going to personally need um, in order to fulfil your, your research duties. 
One thing that I've not mentioned is here in the UK, we have the HEA, the Higher Education Academy. I hope I said that right. Essentially, if you are on a teaching pathway or if you're on the research and teaching pathway, so like I am the lecturer to senior lecturer to reader to professor, most likely you are going to need to get um, a fellow qualification with them. So I did this, I'll do a separate video on this. It took me a year and a half of study on top of being a lecturer at the same time. And essentially it's a formal way of recognizing your qualification as being somebody who can teach in an undergraduate and postgraduate classroom. But yeah, there are, as I said, different routes. And so that's when you, why, when you look for jobs. So if you are searching for a job right now, you're going to see things like assistant uh, teaching, fellow position, you're going to see things like senior research fellow, as alongside what you might think of the more kind of traditional titles you'll see as lecturer, senior lecturer, reader and professor. And it all comes down to how you want to blend research and teaching. You know, do you have a strong preference for one or the other? If so, you might want to choose to focus on one particular pathway. If, like me, you love both parts of that job, you'll most likely be wanting to look here in the UK, at least, for lecturer, senior lecturer, reader and professor positions. We can also talk in the future about um, what happens when you retire as a professor, how you stay connected to the university, um, a little bit about adjunct, I can never say that word either, professors. Um, and I think it might be really good to do a video about the differences again between UK and US. As I said, we use the term lecturer in a very different capacity. And there are other differences with how the systems operate, um, which is useful, hopefully, if you're looking for a job. I hope that hasn't made matters more confusing. Treat it as a guideline. Don't treat it as the absolute, you know, treat it as just a, an entry guideline into some of the terms that we use at university. I had an awesome week last week. My PhD student passed their end of uh, three years or three and a half years of study viva. So they defended their dissertation. So that was fabulous. I had a really nice week at work. It is Saturday when I'm recording this and I am about to start work now. So it is an open day. My university are doing a mixture of virtual open days and then in-person campus tours. And this afternoon it is a virtual open day. So I'm about to hop online and talk to prospective students. But have an awesome week. Leave me a comment about university titles and how your university does it or which pathway you're looking to follow. Um, like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And I will see you next week for another video. And we're getting so near graduation. I cannot wait to get my robe back on and swish around campus. So I'll see you soon and I'll see you yeah, next Monday. Bye.